Welcome to Courtside Moms. I'm your host, Wendy Sparks. Today, I have the utmost joy and pleasure to sit with Christy Flynn, mother of Malachi Flynn of the Toronto Raptors. This is an amazing interview, everybody. So sit back and enjoy. I do it naturally. I do it naturally. Baby. Baby. Welcome, Christy. I'm so blessed that you're here today with me. And thank you for coming on Courtside Moms so we can talk about your son, Malachi. Thanks, Wendy. It's really nice to be here. It's a pleasure to meet you. Amazing. So, Christy, we met this year at the Summer League in Vegas. We hit it off right away. (laughs) Wasn't that fun? It was very fun. It was a very fun time. So I want to tell you how actually I figured out that you could have possibly been Malachi's mom. So (laughs) yes, out with the story because I've been curious. So our boys just finished playing and um, I was walking to go to the washroom, believe it or not. And I looked at you and I'm like, huh. Malachi resembles this woman, (laughs) honest to goodness. And then I was watching you and you had a few people with you. And then I look and there was a a little boy and I'm sure he had a a jersey on or a shirt that said Flynn. (laughs) And right away, this is when I walked up to you and I said, are you Malachi's mom? And you said, yes, I am. But I saw the stare, like, who are you? And then I, and then, well, you know the story, you were there. So I thought it was just funny and I was really blessed just to walk and there you are (laughs) or there you were. (laughs) Yes, it was fun. It it was, you were the first Raptor mom or family that I've met. Uh, So it was very nice to see you. (laughs) Yes. And you were so gracious to take a picture with me. (laughs) We did take a picture. Yes, we did. And I posted it right away. And people were like, wow, this is Malachi's mom, Raptor Moms. This is great. You guys have to do an episode eventually. And here we are. So thank you. We made it. (laughs) Yes, we did. A mom to seven kids. Did you ever imagine you'd be here at the OVO Athletic Center as a Raptor mom? Absolutely not. You know... When we look at the road to how our kids got to where they are now, that doesn't that amaze you? Like, how does that make you feel? It is amazing. Um, and some, it, it takes a, I still feel so new. I, sometimes I have to remind myself, you really are an NBA mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool. It's a great experience for us both. And speaking of that, this is a new, brand new experience for both of us as our boys are both new Raptors. How has the organization welcomed you and your family? Um, well, in the beginning, the most, most of the, con- the conversations and were happening between my oldest son. Um, he was the contact person for Malachi and for the family. So most of the meetings would have been happening with him. And he was just an integral part of the whole process. He was uh, very valuable in helping the rest of us and smoothing along the process. And I knew nothing about what would happen in the process. So it was just awesome to have him there. Um, so I think maybe the first time that I felt really welcomed by the organization itself is when they sent me ice cream. Mother's Day ice cream? (laughs) Mother's Day ice cream. (laughs) Four containers all the way from Florida to Tacoma. (laughs) That's amazing. And the Raptors organization, I mean, they're, they're fantastic. You know what I mean? So I feel as a Raptor mom myself, blessed, um, and welcomed and I'm so happy 
that they're so accommodating um, to the families because that's not necessarily always the case. Sometimes we're just the forgotten ones, (laughs) but I don't feel that with the Raptor organization. So, I mean, that's just me. Yeah, whenever I meet someone, everyone's always very welcoming and friendly, and I'm just meeting people slowly as we go along. I mean, with COVID, I think it was really challenging to know the organization and meet the organization because... It was COVID. So I have to speak to my son about that Mother's Day ice cream. (laughs) Because I saw the ice cream in the freezer. But let me tell you, it wasn't presented as Mother's Day ice cream. It was just presented as ice cream. (laughs) Yep, I should have been there to open the door with the box. So, So Christy, tell me, where is home for you? Tacoma, Washington. Is that where you're originally from? And did Malachi grow up there? Correct. Malachi grew up there. My dad was military. So as a child, I traveled around to different parts of the world. Um, But he settled in Washington, in Tacoma. That's where he retired. So that's where I lived from the age of 10 until now. Until now. Wow. So you raised your awesome seven kids there. Yes. Wow. That's amazing. It's like a lot of history for you. It does feel like home and history and yes. we're very very connected nice to the city okay so what are your earliest memories now of malachi getting involved and playing basketball well the earliest memories are before he played um when he was born having the older siblings we were going to five basketball games a week his sisters were playing in high school, his dad was coaching at the time. Um, so he was on my lap going to basketball games from day one. So you guys are a basketball family. Basketball has been good to our family, yes. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> so I guess, now did all your kids play basketball? Like was sports really an integral part of their upbringing? Yes, um, we, they did track basketball and the boys did football as well it was just always a part right and I couldn't stop them yeah <laughs> <laughs> how did you manage to go watch all those games mom <laughs> so I would go to one boys game my oldest son's games yep. for halftime and halftime I would leave and I would go to the girls games at a different school in the city um Yes. Get to as many as you can. Yeah. Divide and conquer. And, That's right. And there were games that I missed. There were some things I missed. There was a lot going on, but went to as many as I could without a doubt. As moms, you know, we have to multitask and sometimes we have to split ourselves and three, four. Yes. In your case, seven. Yes. <laughs> yes. And be there, like you said, and try to get to as many activities as possible. So... <laughs> What comes to mind when you think back to his college recruitment and how did you guide him through the selection? Okay. So the college recruitment was a process in of of itself. There was a lot involved with it. Um, A lot of constant phone calls. Um, When it originally began, he was not highly recruited. So there was not a lot of that happening. Um, And originally there was a school, Pacific, um, down in California that was very interested. We went on one recruiting trip. Funny story, when we went on that, this was his first recruiting trip, and we were in the airport um, heading there and just happened to run into the coach for Wazoo, the head coach for Wazoo, and of course chatted with him and nothing came of it and then went on, on about our way. Um, so then he did commit to Pacific, um, but there were some coaching changes at that time. And so he was, he de- decommitted once he decommitted, then the recruiting process really got heavy. A lot of schools started calling, right. um, one of them happened to be Wazoo, <laughs> <laughs> which, um, meant a lot to us being able to play in the PAC 12, having grown up, you know, in that part of the, the country, it was a big deal to be able to be in the Pac-12. Um, and Wazoo was showing a, a lot of interest. Um, 
And when you say Wazoo, we're talking about Washington State? Correct. Washington Perfect. State. The Cougars. Nice. Yes. So you were saying that meant a lot to you. Tell us why. The Pac-12 in our area, I mean, that's where we grew up. UW, University of Washington is right, right. you know, up the street from us. Um, and it's just one of the major conferences and just important to, to the family. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And so he played there, if I believe it was two seasons? Two seasons. And then he later transferred um, to, to San, San Diego. Diego State. Correct. Right. So tell Correct. us why the transfer. Uh, so initially deciding to go to Washington State was a, a great decision. Like I said, I think he's been very independent and very smart in his yeah. decisions. Um, and that was a great decision. Um, it was a really good Great two years, um, good for development. Um, at the time that he decided to switch schools, I, I support him with that too. I think that also was a very good decision to um, change. He wanted to be able to play at a school where he could win, maybe get a little more uh, attention by winning. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he appreciated the culture at the San Diego and chose to go there. Nice. Both were great decisions for him. So you mentioned earlier that your older son was involved a lot. Was he involved at that time to help him, to help Malachi go through that college process as Emotionally, well? Emotionally, yes. Yeah. Certainly yeah. not to the extent that he was, because he was in college. No, he was working at that time, but yeah. Right. So he was big brother, yes. just helping his yeah, little absolutely. baby brother out. Very absolutely. At any point during Malachi's upbringing, did you realize there may be a path to pro sports? Pro sports? Probably not. <laughs> Free college? Definitely on my mind. Yeah. yeah. You see, for us as moms, it's different, right? Like, we sit there and we watch our kids play, but... We see a potential, but it's more about education than it really is about pro sports. Like I myself, I didn't understand when I watched NBA that it actually was somebody's job, that these players were actually getting paid to me was just entertainment. It was like, oh, this is so cool. I'm going to sit there and watch these games. And then I go, not realizing that, wait a minute, <laughs> this is actually a possibility. So A good paying job, <laughs> but a job. It, yeah. It's it's a job. Yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely. not just going out there playing basketball. They they have a whole lot more to do. Yes, to fulfill the role as that is their job. Uh, oh, yeah. for sure, for sure. And sometimes it takes us as parents. You know what I mean. Uh, a lot of resources and, you know what I mean, uh, people that we have to find that are really in the know that can help us and explain to us, like, yes, your child um, can get a great free education from this ball, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and mixed with their talent. However, they could go a little further. So like I was saying for myself, it, it really was, it, it took a lot. Like when my son went to college and, and switched colleges, for me, it was just him switching colleges. I didn't really think NBA so much. Like, you know what I mean? You think, okay, he's going to go. But it really, in my brain, wasn't that serious until people were actually talking about it, until I saw it on TV. So for you, when you were watching Malachi play at San Diego, did you get that feeling like, hold on, like, it could go further than just San Diego. Like he could end up actually playing in the NBA. Yes, I did have that sense by the time he got to San Diego. Um, the coaching staff there, uh, I re it was a part of the conversation in the recruitment for him to come there. Um, and, and yes, I could see that this was a possibility for him. So tell us about your experience with him being at San Diego, like, did you get a chance to watch some of the games? And if so, what was that like for you? Uh, it was really fun. Um, felt like I became a world traveler. <laughs> 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 Even though I was just going to San Diego, but I made it to a lot of games. I, it, I um, took a lot of time off work and was able to make almost, uh, made the majority of his games in yeah. college. Something you can't do in yeah. the NBA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 82 games. Yeah, that's true. 
Okay, so tell me then, do you remember the first time you watched him play on television? It's it's like a surreal situation. Yeah. I, you have this big screen TV in your living room, and at some point, the camera is just on him. So just your son's face is filling up this TV screen. Yeah. It's strange. <laughs> I remember watching my son play for the first time on TV as well, and it just blew my mind. And I told my parents. Now, I was in Montreal. They were in, in, uh, in Nova Scotia, and I will never forget. I said to them, well, you could actually watch it on your computer. And I had to explain to them, God love them, <laughs> <laughs> that you could watch the game live on this computer and I'll never forget my mother was so shocked to see Kim's face and it was just a screen by it the is, way it wasn't it yeah. is shocking but for her it was an experience she didn't care about the game she was like how did he how did his face get into this 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 computer yes. she could, yeah she couldn't register so I thought it was hilarious and then when they watched a game for them it's so surreal even to this day my parents um watch Kim play they don't really understand the sport, but they understand Kim is playing the sport, right? So, so we can relate. Yeah, Malachi's grandma loves watching his games. And aww, aww, that's amazing. <laughs> she, she got to go to one of his games live. That was very special. Aww. So, walk us through Malachi's decision to enter the draft, and what do you? What did you know about the NBA at that point? Well, I know as much as the next person knows about the NBA. You turn the TV on and you watch them. Yeah. And, and the players, they drive nice cars. I mean, that's probably all I know about the NBA. <laughs> uh, um, but his decision, it was, it was a process. Um, he'd had a really good season, uh, that one season at San Diego. Yeah. And it was good timing. Um, you, he, could, he did have another year that he could have spent in college. And you have to weigh, well, yeah. you could get injured, um, and then would you still have that opportunity to go in the NBA? I mean, right. And once you go, you can always um, get an education. Yeah. But you can't always be at the right time to enter the NBA. That is a great answer because that is so true. You always have the option to go back and get your education. But when that opportunity comes, sometimes, or you don't even know if you're ever going to get that opportunity again. I mean, you don't even, you didn't even probably realize you're going to get that opportunity that, that had presented itself. And then now you're like, well, do I leave? Do I stay? What do I do? So for us as parents, you know what I mean? We, we, well, we go with our gut, but then we leave it to our kids and we say, well, make that decision. And we just pray that is that right decision because you never know what is going to happen. You don't. So don't, it's a very uncertain field. It is. Like anything in life, right? <laughs> so take us to draft night now, start <laughs> to finish. Tell us all about your family's oh my draft gosh. night. gosh. <laughs> so you already know I have seven kids, so everybody was home. Beautiful. <laughs> so there's a lot of people in our house. Them and all the kids, the grandkids. And, um, and it was just a lot of activity. There were last minute things we had to do. I, I think Malachi had to take a trip to Nordstrom for something. Some shoes didn't show up or I, I don't know because I wasn't <laughs> taking care of any of that. But there's just all these last minute duties to, to perform. Everything got done. We had the equipment that the NBA sent to us so that it could right. be shown on TV. So that's all set up in our living room. Um, the level of activity and excitement and anticipation, it, it's really hard to put words yeah. to yeah. those feelings. Um, I can only imagine. Yeah. Fun, f I mean, it, stuff that we're used to, we're used to, all these people around, we're used to a lot of activity, but this was extra heightened. Yes, <laughs> yes. So now you're sitting there with your family and you're just waiting for the names <laughs> you're waiting and you're listening and then finally number 29 comes along and you hear them call out this familiar name to the toronto raptors malachi flynn so tell us about that moment for it's you it's still crazy it really it, it's it's just 
crazy that it was real. (laughs) They really did call his name on TV. And we get that call moments before it's announced on TV. We get the call. So slightly before they show it on TV, we, we know, but only moments before. So just before they show us on TV, we had already just, everybody jumped up and was all excited. Oh, oh, sit sit down. They're going to show us. (laughs) So you have to sit down and then get excited again. (laughs) I was going to see you do it twice. That's funny. (laughs) I can only imagine that. You're sitting there like, yes, hold on, wait. (laughs) The camera crew's like, okay, five, four, (laughs) do it again. Yeah. How do you get excited twice? But I guess for something like this. We've been excited more than twice. Yeah. Yeah. I guess for something to this magnitude in our kids' lives, you know what I mean? It's, it's. I mean, you continue to be excited up until forever, it's right? It's such a culmination of so much work, so much time, yeah. so much planning, so much anticipation. Um, yeah. That those feelings, you get to enjoy them again and again. Yes. On that day. <laughs> so drafted not just to any NBA team, but Canada's team. What did you know about Toronto then? Um, Nothing. Um, my daughter and her son, her son, her husband, my son, <laughs> had been to Toronto. Um, he, he had run that. He was a professional runner and had run in Toronto. Yes. So I had heard a little bit about it. That's all I know about Toronto. It's a nice city. That's it. It's in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you know, that's the time that we like, oh, let's go to Google. <laughs> my son is now going to be living in a different country doing different things. So now this is where I need to, you know what I mean, figure out this place, this new place that my my child is going to be living. So the Raptors were not able to be in Canada due to the pandemic and spent the year in Tampa. What was that like for Malachi? Um, it was a transition. You know, anytime you're going from not being in the NBA to being in the NBA, there's a transition. But it was an unusual transition because he couldn't be in the city right. of where he was playing for. Um, it was nice to still have him in the United States for that year. Yeah. Um, that was nice. I was able to get over to um, Tampa and visit him a couple times and even make it to a couple games yeah. um, after they started letting people in. Um the weather is nice. <laughs> in Florida, it was a place that I was not familiar with. So it was nice yeah. um, to have him there. You know, I appreciate that because for my son, he had previously played for the Orlando Magic. And then here he gets waved and signs with the Raptors in Tampa, Florida, which is just an hour (laughs) and 15 minutes away. So for him, the transition was easy. He didn't have to, okay, by the way, you're going back to Canada tomorrow. So get your family and go pack up your house. You have a couple hours and buy. For him, it was like, okay. I'm, go- I'm literally going up the street. So I understand what you're saying about the transition because sometimes it could be so quick. And especially yes. with them being young. I mean, Malachi is 23. Correct. So were you afraid as mom now for him leaving you really now on a different <laughs> level? Now he's now he's, he's living, you know what I mean? This is, this is the NBA now. This is not just, this is not San Diego State. This right. is like- <laughs> right. So, yes, there's those fears. Mom always wonders, well, what is he doing with his spare time? But at the same time, he has four sisters yeah. who are extremely motherly. Um, so he's being watched not just by me. <laughs> <laughs> he's got his sisters. <laughs> so so I, w- I was comfortable. And his brothers. And he's very close to his brothers. And Okay. So a lot of family visits in Tampa when mom's not there? The other moms came up? <laughs> Unfortunately, sometimes they like to visit without me. Yes. Okay. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Mom, this is a visit for the kids. You can come another time. <laughs> yeah. So now that Malachi is in, in Canada, um, has he found um, a permanent residence? Yes, I'm happy to say. Because that's another stressor. You yeah. you move from place to place. You don't know where you're going to live. Yeah. You're a homeless NBA person for a while. You know? <laughs> But yes, he has a home. Roaming um, a different re- country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, just recently. Um, so still in the move-in process. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and that'll take a little bit, right? 
It will. You know, and you, you say he's a, he's a quiet man. Well, so is my son. So I can only imagine them two sitting together. It must be boring. So. <laughs> it's a good thing they have Scotty Barnes. I just, to fill in the yeah, blanks. To fill, yeah, yeah, I can't see them two sitting there chit-chatting on the plane. It's probably boring, yeah. yeah anyway. <laughs> Malachi Flynn, the NBA player for the Toronto Raptors. How does that sound to you? Incredible. Mm. Incredible. Unbelievable sometimes, but it, it is absolutely real and it's incredible. Yeah. Is it something you very proud of him? Of course. Can you ever get used to that? I don't know. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> you know, I'm excited for you for when you get that opportunity to witness a game in the Scotiabank Arena. Yes. I mean, we're going to get to do that in a couple of days. Yes. Right? I mean, they've left. Now they're gone to, uh, to Boston, and they'll be back to play in a few days. And let me tell you, I've been to the Scotiabank Arena before, but not as a Raptors mom until last night, previously as a, a, a Magic mom, right? So okay, right. It's so different <clears throat> It's so surreal. The fans are fantastic. Last night was so hype. So I'm excited for you to get to see this because it's, I can tell you now it's different than it was for us in Tampa watching the Raptors play. Oh, I, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that. I was sorry to be on the plane (laughs) at the time that they were playing yesterday, but... I will make it to the next game. Absolutely. And like I said, we're, we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll have to sit together and watch this game and cheer <laughs> our boys on. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so Malachi is your son. Yes, we were just saying he's Malachi Flynn of the Toronto Raptor. <laughs> however, Raptors, however, he's still for you, Malachi. So how do you keep him level-headed? Um, I... I I feel like he does that very well yeah. himself. He's just a level-headed kid. Um, although he's not a kid, he's kind of grown up now. But <laughs> um, he's done a good job of making decisions. He's thoughtful um, and contemplative. Yeah. Um, probably the best thing I do to keep him level-headed is cook for him. <laughs> he wants his food. When he's got his food, he's good to go. <laughs> oh, okay, so we'll talk about food soon. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> These young men have to grow up so quick. Life as an NBA player comes with attention, fame, and money. What have you done to support him so far through all of this? Sure. Um, yeah, as a mom, you, you do worry about the temptations that come along with all of that. Yes. And, you know, what direction they might go. I feel like he's doing a really good job. And we do have the family, the whole family to support him. He's got, you know, the the siblings, and they're so tight-knit and close. Yeah. Um, he's got great relationships with some of his old coaches, so he's got a very good support system, yeah. um, and I just feel confident in him with that. And that's good because as a mom, we want to feel like our kids have people that they can trust because, yes. as we know, this industry isn't that always forgiving, right? Correct. And our kids are just so raw. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is all yeah. brand new. The different stage is set for them and they need to be careful. It's a wonderful industry. I love basketball. I couldn't ask for anything more different than my son. But then you look on the flip side, sometimes we're like, you got to be careful though. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not everybody is, is as nice as you think. Which brings me to the question, with this fame comes people that want to get involved in your son's success. <laughs> How do you filter all of that? Yeah. So I I feel like that our family is so large and so tight knit that I feel like it would be hard for people to get through. So he's kind of protected through us. Um, And at the same time, he's, like I said, independent and he makes good decisions on his own. Um, So together, it just makes a good picture. Um, And I'm not too concerned about uh, people trying to come in and, use yeah. or abuse I'm, I'm not seeing yeah. that happening yeah good and good like I said it, and it's, it's great for for kids to have that that armor that shield that's going to be there for them because sometimes there's things that they just don't see they don't have time yeah they're out there playing and they're they're building their bodies and they're they're trying to they're trying to stay 
perfect for the public eye. Right. So it's good that they always have that backup and someone who's there to say, wait, hold on. Malachi, this is what's happening or this is what you don't see and I'm going to help you with this. So I love the fact that your family is large enough that, you know what I mean, he has a whole circle of people around him that will help him because he's really young. He is young. Yeah, he's, <laughs> to me he's, he's a my baby. baby. Yes, yes. <laughs> 23 years, but he's wow. still my baby. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be your baby when he's 40. Absolutely. Yeah, I get it. My, my son's 29. I call him a baby too. <laughs> And he gets so upset. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> what are you most excited for this season with the Raptors? Um, being able to be at a game live in yeah. Toronto, you know, just moving into the city and being a part of the excitement and the atmosphere here. Yeah. Um, that's very exciting. I come to a new country. I'm really becoming a world traveler. <laughs> Not just to San Diego anymore. Well, like I said, I can't wait for us to together watch a game in the Scotiabank yes. Arena in the next couple of days. So tell me, what is one memorable moment that comes to mind between you and Malachi? Um, and this is not necessarily basketball related? Anything you want. Um, just, uh, I guess uh, some of the fondest memories maybe are just holding him mm. at the basketball games because he was too young to do anything. So just being able to be with him, holding yeah. while everything else is happening, um, with him actually interested in what was happening. I mean, as a very young person. Yeah. He wasn't just in the stands. He was actually watching. And I think that's part of the reason he has such a good understanding for the game. Yeah. Is because he was actually interested in what was happening out there from the beginning. And just sitting on my lap and Aww. having him learn those things. Kind of special. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm looking forward to us having this conversation in the future and us talking about new memories that you and Malachi oh, there's create a few together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has a great career ahead of him. So we'll, you'll be back and say, you know what? <laughs> new memories as now Malachi as an adult. So yeah. I can't wait to hear that. So tell me, Christy, what is it like being the courtside mom to Malachi Flynn? Well, yeah. accepting the fact that I'm a courtside mom is a challenge. You, it's something you have to remind yourself of. It doesn't seem real sometimes. Yes. Um, but to Malachi Flynn, it's just fun. It, it's very fun. The, the whole process from starting basketball when he was zero all the way up to now, it's just been a really fun time. With family and with him. And yeah. It's such a great ride. Memory making all along. Yes. Yes. For me, I feel blessed that I've, you know what I mean, to see this progression. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So when you look back at Malachi, you know what I mean? You're just like, wow. When he was, like you said, zero. And now he's 23. And you're like, wow. This is different now. You know what I mean? He's not playing rec ball. It's not high school or college. Yeah. Like he's... He's on a different platform. He's on a different stage. Yes. I do remember as when he was quite young, watching the big boys play, thinking he can never play with the big boys. How wrong was I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at him now, mom. He's, he, He's he playing is, with the big boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's considered the big boy, right? Yes. One, <laughs> one of them. So, well, I wish him all the luck um, this season. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see um, our kids play and to see this new team with the Raptors and, you know what I mean, and, and what it will bring for the 2021-2022 season. Yes. Very so with that times. said, yes, let, with that said, let's do some fun facts about Malachi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned that he likes food. So tell me, what is that go-to meal that <laughs> you make that he must absolutely have? Lemon chicken pasta. So what he asks for when he comes home for the first time, it's what I'm probably going to cook in the next couple of days while I'm here. <laughs> Lemon chicken pasta. 
lemon chicken pasta next couple of days and i'm here for a week and a half oh you might get to have some <laughs> there you go i'm gonna call, i'm gonna call christy because when i cook i cook large that's what i'm used to doing so well, you're used to that enough for you well pretend that all your seven children are here with you <laughs> so i can get a plate of this lemon chicken pasta all right what's one item as a child that he always had that he couldn't live without other than a basketball? That is definitely a tough question, probably for all in BMO. Yep. Probably all the boys, <laughs> it was a ball. Um, so can I say a person? It's yep. His brother, uh, Isaiah. Oh. Yeah. They were a team. They still are. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You know, it's funny. I asked my son the same question and he said, can I say somebody? <laughs> so I love that you asked yeah. that. People automatically just assume an item and sometimes it is, it's, it's an actual person. Did he have a childhood nickname? And if so, <laughs> what was it? The only nickname I can think of that his siblings might have called him was the Hulk. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Which in his, now you would never understand, but you know, children go through phases. Oh, yeah. Um, and he definitely had his Hulk phases. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> now, let's look at an advice question, okay? What advice would you give to another courtside mom? Um, that's a tough question for me because I still feel new myself. We, you know, the first year that I was a courtside mom was COVID and everything was different. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't feel like I have a great deal of advice for moms. Um, the sure. number one thing for me is maybe seeking out other moms and meeting them. That's what I... Yeah and wanting to do is just make connections. Sure. Um, and that may be the smartest thing for a new mom now. That's actually, I, I love that answer because for me, I feel the same way. Hence courtside moms, right? So a network of moms is always wonderful to have because we can talk about our experience and our paths and to date, what we've been through, what our kids have been through, uh, the things that we see, um, all the the beautiful blessings, the challenges. So I love that 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 you're saying. You know, I I, I want to meet other moms, and um, as a mom myself, this is something that I can help with. This is I can offer you right. um, because I feel it's, it's important. Like I'm blessed to have met you today. You've taught me. Um, something completely different because for me, my son, he went undrafted. So to hear you talk about your draft and your joy, I'm like, wow, I didn't experience mm -hmm. that. So it's different. So I appreciate sure. you telling me about your experiences. And for me, this is my learning process. So we always have advice to give. We always have help or support to give each other. So I thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and with that said, I want to thank you so, so, so much for coming on Courtside Moms and sharing your story and your journey and, and, and teaching everybody about Malachi, who he is as the human and not only the athlete. We want people to really know and understand our players and where it all began. And it begins with mom. So, <laughs> so, you did. Thank you, though. Thank you so much for coming on Courtside Moms. Thanks. It's been great. Thank you.